Can I give a big disclaimer to your listeners? Please? Yeah. Please don't take anything I say seriously. I change my mind every two seconds, and I probably said a lot of stupid stuff today. Can I second that? For me. I choose my words very carefully. <laughs> Susie doesn't need a disclaimer. Me and Brenda would like super disclaimers. Don't take it seriously. We're not mentors. We're not good examples. I'm not. Yeah. And me yeah. worse today. You're a bad influence on me. Like, I'm at my worst. And I love it. Slay. Slay. Welcome to the I Tried to Be Straight podcast. I don't have to try to be straight because I'm already straight. I like to kiss boys. Wow. Uh, that is my sister, Brenda. Guest. Guest of the week. Of the week. Guest of the week. Very special guest. I don't know why I'm here. We there told are two her of them. That she was gonna be on call her daddy, and <laughs> she got here. <laughs> she got bamboozled. Us. And I have a little bit of a crush on Nate. This proximity is kind of like. But you're married and pregnant. And pregnant. And my husband's sitting right there. I'm typically. Oh my a lot gosh! I'm, so- than I'm this. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but like they said, I'm eight months pregnant. You look so good. Thanks. I am intimidated. They put me in the middle, and this was their choice. And I feel like there's two Susies, and they're both looking at me, and I'm kind of scared. And they haven't really told me what's going to happen this episode because there's surprises or something. There's and no I'm plans. intimidated. It's an intervention for Nate. Yeah, and we're having an intervention. Um, why is it so scary? Because you know why we're here. No. We're here yeah. to talk about being gay. No. Oh no! Oh no! What else? We're here to talk about you being a keyboard warrior. He was a keyboard <laughs> warrior. Okay, someone's got to do it. I want to give some context on my relationship with you. Sister, and right? Yes, sister and Got it. The That's journey. it, right? Sorry. I'm interrupting. I'm interrupting again. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. I'm so sorry. And the journey. <laughs> Every time I see Nate's mic go up a little bit, I'm like. He can't help himself. She flinches. I've got trauma. <laughs> okay, so uh, Brenda and I are a year apart. A year and 18 days to be exact. 18 days, yep. We're both Libras. Uh, So when I was first coming out, uh, I was really scared. And I told Brenda um, what I was struggling with. And she looked at me straight face. And she just said, yeah, like, I've, I've been known. And having somebody, first of all, having somebody who you grew up with know you so well is... A huge blessing and a gift um, but then the other part of it was having somebody who was so accepting and loving was mm. an even bigger gift and part of well. our story that we I don't even think we've really gotten into this Mm-mm. but I we our family went through some really hard family stuff and when I was 16 you were 15 or maybe 15 14 um, I decided to lean really heavily into my faith in the church and we had both grown up Catholic so Brenda kind of went the other way. A Mexican Catholic, which is like, you go to church once a year, like when yeah. you, like, yeah. So I went into Christian world and got a job, internship school, and then we kind of our paths came back together when I was struggling with the sexuality part of my life. Yes, because I stopped talking to Susie when she became really Christian. She did. Oh. So Not because she was Christian, but just because I was like. Our family went through a hardship, and I think I sort of leaned on friends and social life and maybe not as healthy habits, and Susie was like, I'm going to go the other route. And so I kind of thought you were didn't really like me much. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and I think we've kind of talked about this, but... What's so crazy is I think what the message that I was receiving during that time was that I needed to let go of those quote unquote sins. And Mm. part of that was also letting go of the people that like I was doing those things with. And I don't I didn't have the wherewithal at that age to understand the implications of that Mm -hmm. down the line. All I was thinking was I need to lean into my faith and my faith is telling me to cut these people out, which is funny because. Uh, Maggie, our friend Maggie, she's like our sister, Mm -hmm. but we just had that conversation this last week when I was like, what did you think during that time when I was heavily Christian and I like basically cut you out, you know? And she had a really, she she had a really loving response and she was like, Mm -hmm. I just knew that we like were taking different paths, but if anything ever happened, like we would both always be there for each other. I thought that Mm -hmm. your youth group leaders were poisoning you against me. 
Oh, were they? No, I, they well, that's weren't. what it felt like. Yeah, what, it's interesting because they they were really loving and really kind. They never said anything about you. I think it was all you're okay. So you're like fourteen, fifteen, interpreting the Bible for yourself. Like in my head, I was like. I wasn't a theologian and I was just doing what I thought I needed to yeah. do. And mm -hmm. when you hear things come out of the pulpit to like the big C church, not big C, but like in your church, when you're mm -hmm. sitting in the congregation, you think like, oh, when they say cut this sin out, it means cut everybody along with it. Yeah. yeah. And in my head, I didn't think, oh, well, I probably shouldn't cut my sister out. Yeah. And that was on me. I was 14. Yeah, you were kind of mean. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I believe Dang. that. I'm she sorry. was kind of mean. And I will say, I know like you're sticking up for the church, and I'm sure your church was great. But there are some elements of church where it's subtle, but they do kind of encourage you a little bit to separate yourself from people yeah. that yeah. might lead you down a bad path. And I don't know if that was your situation, but I have definitely seen that where they're like, don't be around people that are going to, you know, take you down a dark road. And... So it's possible they were slightly influencing that. I was that. also slightly confused because we went through all our family crap. And then Susie and I went through a lot of stuff. Our parents are originally from Mexico. We were going through the throes of it. And they were like, we need to move back home to be like with our family. So we're all moving to Mexico. So we all moved to Mexico. Susie and I were there for a year. We hated it. It was just, we went from being here to like a really really small town in mexico so it was oh. just like super rural it like, wasn't like we went from here to like a city yeah like mexico city or like guadalajara i probably would puerto vallarta Ooh. i would have had fun it was That'd like a small fine. town That'd be okay so Susie and i were just like we don't want to be here blah 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 we decided to move back convinced our parents at 15 and 16 at this point to let us move back to the u.s wow and long story short, Susie's youth pastors took her in. But as a 15 year old, it felt like mm. your sister's good. You Oof. are bad. Oof. So your sister can live with us, but you can't, mm. even though you're both going through the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because they maybe saw Susie as like more compliant mm -hmm. and yes. you as more rebellious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they weren't sure if they wanted that in their home potentially. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, it was hard. I mean, I get it. But that's your only family in the States, right? Susie was your only family. Susie here. was it. Yeah. And now you're alone. Who did you live with? So I ended up living with my basketball coach. She took me in for oh. six months. And then I wow. rented a room from this girl, Nikki, who ended up being like my older sister. Damn, you guys um, are so brave. You and Susie both. It was crazy. It was crazy, dude. It was that's crazy. That's amazing. And I remember we like saw each other like maybe three times during the course of that yeah. year. Whoa. Yeah. Like my graduation, your graduation, and like you came over once. Mm -hmm. And I think I did your hair for like winter formal or something. Yeah, you did. Dang. So it was, it was yeah. So I mean, Susie was just going through her whole Christian thing and I was just kind of like. Not about it. It's not that I wasn't not about it. I was just kind of like. I felt like you probably th thought badly of me so mm -hmm. and I've always been somebody that is very like if you don't want me in your life mm. then I won't be a part of it good riddance yeah but you know what's interesting is now like looking back at it I can unpack it and see how our family had blown up and all I really wanted was a family to belong yeah. to and so when this what felt like an opportunity to belong to a family was presented I was like I'm in like what's interesting though is I as great as they were to me and also like I've moved and lived with other families mm -hmm. multiple times and but I've never actually felt part of their family and now as an adult like I can so deeply identify with the fact that like you're my only family yeah. not just you but like our brother too and mm -hmm. like but like I have this bond with you that is um I'm gonna get teary eyed Aww. but like I I just love you. You're my best friend. Um, and I am so appreciative that we are able to have this relationship. Now. Yeah. Um, it yeah. was hard because to like, to be honest, it was so back to like the whole, the gay, you being bi and all that stuff. Like 
I don't know what it is, but I knew at the time that that's what you were looking for was family. Yeah. Mm. And so for me, you not talking to me was like, but you're looking for family and I'm your, your yeah. blood. Yeah. B- B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> yeah. You can um, say it. <laughs> we can bleep it. But I was just like, dude, you're, you're crying and saying that you want family. Like I'm right here, girl. I need it too. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and it was like, but we both didn't know how to communicate that. No, we didn't. Well, I, I wanted to communicate that, but I didn't think you wanted to hear it. Mm. So I was just like, whatever. Yeah. And it was kind of the same with your sexuality. I kind of always had like an idea. Mm-hmm. Wow, really? Yeah. Oh, I knew. Damn. It's the shorts. I've been known. It's the shorts. <laughs> it's the lesbian shorts. The lesbian no, shorts. It's, it Call wasn't back. the lesbian shorts. We've actually talked about this. It was Miss for me. Oh. What is that? Can we bleep her name? We'll bleep her name. We'll bleep her name. <laughs> Mrs. was our sixth grade middle school teacher. Wait, don't keep saying that. We're going to do bleep so much. <laughs> Make a new name. Uh, Miss George. Georgia. Call her Miss Georgia. Miss Georgia. Okay. She was beautiful like the Georgia sun. She was a beautiful <laughs> Southern woman. She was Susie's like exact type. Hot. Tall, <laughs> white, thin, and blonde. Emphasis on the blonde. I know. I've seen. Yeah, you've seen her type. Um, she was. Yeah, she was just this really beautiful woman that was our teacher. She must have been what, like, in her late twenties, like thirties. I don't know. Early thirties. She Who was knows? really pretty, and Susie just had this like affinity towards her, and that like had confirmed all of my it's suspicions. So embarrassing. Why is it embarrassing? I don't know. It's embarrassing. This is why you have me on the podcast because we're t- we're getting rid of that embarrassed feeling. We knew yeah. that we'd be embarrassed. That's and true. Was going on. You signed up for this. I'm no sorry. shame. I'm just here for the fun times. No shame. I, I feel way less. I'm not being confronted. This is great. I we I all been, everybody who didn't have an embarrassing crush in middle school. Right. You know? And the nice thing is, I embarrass myself really well. So sometimes we need extra help to embarrass Susie because she's pretty. Because she's pretty put together. She's bulletproof. Yeah, honestly. she's polished. I'm not bulletproof. Yeah. <laughs> You seem very put together compared to me. I'm, I am just a very messy person sometimes. So yeah, I don't know. I had my suspicions growing up, and then that teacher was like, "Oh, for sure." I don't know if you realized you had a crush. Yeah, I don't think I did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Did you ever have any of those? Oh yeah. Where like somebody else was like, "You like them," but you were like, "No, no I don't." No, because we were in such a like religious culture that I nobody would even insinuate no. it. And I was giving gay more obviously than Susie was, so people <laughs> would avoid the topic. Uh, I remember I had a really long hug with someone once. And my mom was like, "Why'd you hug that guy for so long?" <gasps> and I was like, "I don't know. And I don't think I was feeling anything, but like maybe like on the edge of like really close connection to this." So kind of little Mm -hmm. things like that but everybody knew that I might be gay so they weren't gonna like bring it up because they knew they were gonna hope that I wasn't. What were you thinking when your mom asked you that? It's like why are you asking me that? Like are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Are you fishing? Yeah like are you fishing? Yeah. Mm. Pretty much. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah anyways it's the long story short that's our relationship. Our relationship and now we're BFFs. We're BFFs. Yeah you work through it. Well I mean Here's the thing, going back to all that, because you know, we've dug into some heavy stuff, and this might not be helpful, but I'm going to do it anyways. You are kids in an impossible situation. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, no, because I had an older brother that kind of took care of me because, like, we had, you know, intense, like, traveling, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So my older brother, like, acted as a parent in some ways. Mm-hmm. And our dynamic was just messy because we were just in a unique situation where the dynamic was not what you'd expect for siblings, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you guys had a dynamic that was not really fair to either of you because you shouldn't have been each other's only family. You should have mm-hmm. been able to not have to find family in a way that you had to decide if you wanted a family that was like more religious and you need to be more mm-hmm. religious with them and your do- sister that was less yeah. religious might not feel safe there or might not have mm-hmm. them feel safe. Like no 15, 16 year old should ever have to make that decision. No 15 year old should ever yeah. have to feel like she has to fit the mold to be with a family that mm-hmm. are also parenting her like daughter or Mm -hmm. sister, like that is impossible. You are teenagers. You've already been through hell. Like, yeah, that's not either of your faults. That's just a very messed up situation. And you guys were both doing the best you could. Like, that's how I see it. 
facts. Yeah. And, and I think you know that now. And in that, I think other people are also put in really tough situations. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, I, you FaceTime me, and I thought you were going to tell me something super crazy. Like, I don't know, just something crazy. Like she got in a car accident? Uh, yeah, something. And she was like, I like girls. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I think, so no I, response I, think at all. I literally said, like, yeah. So And like, I, I remember being <laughs> like, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and... And, and so what's the point? Like, <laughs> I'm, I don't know. You just set it up like a really big thing. And it wasn't. That's another thing that I think. I'm like, I want to find the right words, but like I, I never. I guess I can't empathize sometimes with. Not necessarily like all your guests, but like you guys even just like this whole situation with like being really afraid to come out. Yeah. Obviously, one, because I'm straight, so I don't know what that feels like. But two, because being gay is just so not a big deal to me anymore. Yeah. Like, that is something... I feel like we... I thought we got over the stigma of being gay when that Hillary Duff commercial came out. When you say gay, do you realize what you say? <laughs> Hillary Duff ended homophobia. <laughs> And Susie missed the memo. I did. But she ended it. Like, when was that? Like, 2006? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, I just it don't. It was over. I feel it like, was over at that I point. I feel like it was for sure over after the housing market crash. <laughs> <laughs> people had other shit to worry about than other people being gay. Like. So true. People were losing What's their houses left What's and right. What do you us? care? <laughs> people are kissing. <laughs> So I don't know. So like for me, it just was not, it was just such a, it was such a non thing Yeah. that you liked to kiss girls sometimes. Like it was just like, uh, okay. Can you speak to that? Because there are a lot of people, obviously us included, but I remember the first time that I told somebody that I was bi who was not related to me in any way. Yeah. And I, and he had the same reaction of like, okay. And, and it was such a weight lifted off my shoulders so could you speak to that? Because you're obviously like not super entrenched in the Christian church. Well, okay. So I'm trying to think back and I'm like, when did I start learning about gay culture? And I'm really thinking about Tila Tequila looking for love. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Do we remember Tila Tequila yeah, looking I for do. love on MTV? Yeah. So. Uh, I can watch MTV. Brian Well, of course you couldn't. <laughs> um. Okay, so we're, I'm going to show you some episodes later, but Tila Please. Tequila was like this super hot girl that was just like the it girl at the time, and MTV made a dating show for her, and <laughs> she was bi. So she had guys and girls on the show, like, and it was so... Normal? Normal. Like, it was not a big deal. I don't know. I just didn't think it was a big deal ever. Like, I feel like because I was consuming gay media <laughs> since I was like... In diapers. 11. Yeah. The gay agenda got to you at a young age. Yeah. My godfather was gay. He passed away RIP. Oh. And I think that's like kind of like the question to the point that I'm getting to is like we, when we are in the Christian church, when we're so in, like engulfed and involved in it, we, our bubble is so small because the Christian yeah. church oh my gosh, is yeah. so small. So we think that the whole world is like this, but the reality is there is a whole another world that expands way further than we can. And there are people out there who... It's weird to be straight. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a whole Nowadays? world where, like, being straight is like, that sucks for you. I'm so sorry. Oh, I see. Yes. I you know what I mean? World. That's and, where I live. And you guys are in a world where it's, like, completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of people that are listening to this are stepping into that world mm-hmm. and they're afraid to put themselves out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just the the simplicity of someone not freaking out about someone saying they're gay. It's as simple as that. It's just also so not a big deal. Yeah. Like in the sense, and I mean in the sense of like, there's so many other personality traits that matter. Mm-hmm. Anyways, my point being is that being gay is just not that. It's not the most important part of somebody's yeah. personality. It's like the... Yeah. I think also like 
to just to actually loop it back around to the conversation <laughs> that we're going to have. What conversation? About the comments. So. <laughs> oh. Yes. So that conversation. So the oh. reasons that actually ties into it because you posted, Nate, something last week yeah. on our Instagram that got a lot of hate. And would you like to tell us what that message was in case people haven't seen it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So mostly on the Instagram, it's just like now, you know, posts from the podcast. But I had a post on TikTok that I liked and I was just like, I thought that was a good point. Um, Cause I used to just do like talking head, like videos sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it was like, if Christians don't think we should be gay, what do you think we should do instead? And kind of listing like, well, I don't think like dating girls works. Which I think is and a like, fair question fair also, question. by the way. Yeah. Like, do you think we should be single forever? Like, it, yeah. like do you know that that's where you're asking us? Which like, is typically the answer I feel like most celibacy. Yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, I, I just want people to think about that. And even if they believe that, mm-hmm. just come at us with some compassion because it's not just the simple thing of like, just don't be gay. It's like, well, you, we're gonna have to be alone mm-hmm. and also the church doesn't really have much support for us so on tiktok you know a lot of gen zers a lot of millennials are like yeah it's so true that's great got like it got a lot of views got like sixty five thousand views probably like a few hundred comments 80 percent positive 20 percent negative you viral baby okay <laughs> yeah no i'm just kidding um it's a burden honestly it's a burden it's a burden it's a, people it's don't a realize burden. how hard it is to be pretty <laughs> I'm not into myself more than I should be. I'm working on a balance. I'm really trying. I have a problem. Pray for me. Um, so I put this on Instagram. Being People like, that commented are praying for you. Hopefully. I put this on Instagram and I was like, okay, this is a good point. I actually really like this video. I think it's like a good point. I think people should think about this. Okay, can I loop back around to the, yeah, your last double loop. podcast? Let's double loop. Where you were telling your guess that coming out on Facebook is probably the worst platform he could have ever picked. This is, yeah. So yeah. you uploading that video to Instagram. <laughs> okay. To, to I'm a the reels. Um, a, I knew, I knew. You knew what you were getting yourself into maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's. Can you admit maybe a little bit you were instigating? You did, I knew a little. You did. Okay. On another note, I had a really bad week with like, I had a friend kind of fight with me. I had like, a guy that I, well, it's private, but I had a really promising situation where this person I was like really sad about, then that just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So I was in a bum place. I'm just like, you know what? What more can people do to me? Let's just Mm -hmm. cause like, I'm ready. I need some, I think I needed some, I needed to feel something. I wanted to feel something. Even if it was hate. quote, some men just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. I wanted, (laughs) I was like, it's already burning. I want to feel something. Well, I think. So I just, posted that baby on Instagram. I think you were Instagram. looking for validation. No. no? I don't think Tell I was looking for validation. I knew Tell that me Instagram would validate process. me. I was just like, he was I need some good content. He was looking in the comments. I just wanted to, f- I, you wanted a little, you wanted a little, release a little rage maybe? I just wanted to post something. I was in kind of a bad place and I was just like, I have this video I've been thinking about posting. Let's just post it now. I don't want to yeah. like mess anything else. This video is already ready to go. Let's post it, see what happens. It might get some, it might get some views. Like I was like, this is actually a really good point. I want people to see this. And also as in a like, I don't care. No one can say anything that will really like bug Which me at this point. Which can I say, I don't disagree with you posting the video. You're right. Or the platform. I disagree with you wasting your time and energy. Commenting. Commenting. Yes. Yeah, so what came out of Nate posting this video were yeah. hundreds and upon hundreds upon hundreds of nine hundred and eighty of nine hateful comments. hateful comments. Uh, Just all ignorant comments <laughs> alluding to celibacy. Some actually threatening your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did get a couple. Death yeah, threats. a lot of um, that was a first first death threats. That's how you know you're making it. That's how you yeah. know you're in the biz. A lot of hateful comments. <laughs> it made me a little sick. Yeah. So then Nate and I kind of have like different opinions on this <laughs> because I am of the thought process of I don't want to create another platform or hateful space for people to be commenting these things yeah. because we do have an audience who they're the just, baby gays they're, you're yeah, protecting they're the baby just yeah. stepping into their sexuality they're trying to learn who they are and i would hate for somebody to stumble upon this video and look at all the comments and think oh my gosh everything i thought about the world was right and here it is in this comment section mm-hmm. and so i feel very protective over that baby gay audience that we have 
and then you had the different thought process. Could you explain that one to us? So, yeah, and this, again, is I was kind of dialoguing back and forth with you because yeah. I want to leave the comments on you and turn them off. And I was like, well, A, the fact is we're getting into Christian's feeds and some of the people of watching this will actually be people that might not see anything like this otherwise. Mm-hmm. And because all these Christians are interacting with it, it's going right into the middle of Christian's feats, like some people that are probably questioning. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like, this is getting into a lot more people's feats. It just mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And then also, I think on some level, Christians won't really admit how hard it is for us to be mm-hmm. gay and how harsh we're met when we talk about it. Um, and I think sometimes the only way for people to see it is for them to witness it on a a post that's not, I'm not trying to be mean. Mm -hmm. I'm asking a question and people just saying hateful stuff, saying really condescending stuff, berating me, talking down to me, treating me like I'm 12 years old, not like I'm 33 and have been trying to be straight for 20 years. Like just the whole, like, just carry your cross. 500 variations of just carry your yeah. cross man up or this world jackie is short or I jackie mean, hill guys- perry jackie hill perry i'm like she's probably just bisexual <laughs> okay so who's jackie hill perry um for somebody who doesn't oh, consume yeah yeah jackie hill perry is a speaker who was a with woman she's female with woman and she like felt like she was like going to hell all the time and she didn't feel like she liked guys but she mentioned that she like had really bad experiences with guys growing up. So she was afraid of them. And mm-hmm. then she eventually felt comfortable with this one guy and developed feelings for him and felt like God didn't want her to be gay. So she ended up falling for him and they mm-hmm. got married and fell in love. I think the events might be a little switch around, but yeah, yeah, she wrote I mean, I, I don't gay know, girl, perfect. good God. So She's, she wrote gay girl, okay, good God. I've, yeah. Yes, I've she, heard of this but book. But the problem is, and I don't know her, like I don't know her, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, that probably was a real experience for her. But I that's don't, typically but, like the response you get is, Look Jeez. at this one example. Yes. Like well, it's the token. Yeah. And they use that to say any gay person can find attraction to the opposite gender. They just need to find the right person, which for me, I tried that for 20 years. That was the problem with Jackie L. Perry is that was the mindset that people would put in front of me to say, this is what you need to do to become straight. I tried that. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know if she actually did become straight, if she's fully attracted to him or not. It's not my, no, she not mine she's to judge. she's still attracted to women. But she might actually be bi attracted to both. We like, that's possible. possible. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. But either way, using her to tell me what to you be, should do yeah. Yeah. is frustrating. So it's my, like the part yeah. in there that I disagree with is we every Christian who's either a part of the faith or has deconstructed and stepped away. Everybody knows what the big C church in a big way believes, which is homosexuality is a sin. It's not right. So in my opinion and where I disagree with you, Nate, is I don't think that we need another post to become a vacuum for those people because a majority of the comments in that comment section are Christians who are not being very kind, who are not displaying the fruits of the spirit. And so that's kind of where I'm like, like our video has either equal or less likes than one of the comments in the comment section that was like pick up your cross and so i'm just like i just hate to create that vacuum of hate and at the same time i see what you're saying of like there are people who are kind of more middle of the line but i don't think that their opinions are going to change because of comment i think they're going to change because of knowing a gay person can i i feel like i'm marriage counseling here marriage therapy um I see both sides. Yeah. Uh-huh. I see. I yeah. totally see where you're saying like the hateful, like vacuum. I don't think that anything you comment back is going to change those people's minds. No. But I will say there is like this kind of fierceness to to saying mm. what nobody really wants to say, which is. I mean, I've watched the video. I've interacted with the type of Christian that is like, we love and accept gay people. We just believe that you should be celibate. Like if if you're gay and you love Christ and you follow the Bible, then your choice, then like the right thing to do is be celibate. Yeah. And so in a certain way, I can see how it could be dangerous and scary for 
the baby gaze to read those comments, but it might also be validating to hear somebody finally say, mm. do you realize what you're asking me? Yeah, yeah. So there's kind of like this fierce protectiveness in saying it, and also like the fierce protectiveness of keeping people away from that entire crowd in general, because the, right. the comments were just out of control. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that there's like there's a right or wrong answer here. No. Because there's just not. I think there's a lot of gray area and something that I do admire about you, Nate, is you take risks and mm -hmm. very vulnerable risks. You like you know it's very vulnerable to put up this video of you being really gentle and kind and like posing a really honest question and you're taking the hits and Yeah, I was gonna say ultimately I feel like the video you posted you weren't actually asking for answers you're more so like saying i'm here i'm present and i want you to realize that i hear what you're asking of me yeah and i want you to know that i hear it yeah because yeah. i think sometimes these figureheads that tell you what to do like th sometimes sometimes my problem with the church is that they see people as like really vulnerable and it's almost kind of like this look I'm looking down on you and I don't think that you realize like they kind of look at you like you're dumb yeah mm. you know what I mean and I feel like when these figureheads of these churches say be celibate they kind of think that you're gonna be like okay yeah <sighs> yeah and and I feel yeah. like it's like no I realize what you're asking of me well, do you realize yeah exactly is like it's easy for somebody who doesn't have to practice being celibate to pose this mm -hmm. because they're not the ones actually having to do it. And so, yeah, to finish my thought, I just think it's really admirable. And I didn't realize how how much you were getting hit until you posted that on our mutual account. And then I started reading the comments and I got protective over what people were saying about you. and that was another part too where I was like protective of our audience and then protective of you because I know I knew you had had a rough week and so I think so much of it goes back to like the f and I put myself in your shoes and I think about all the things that you've been through with the church and nobody uh, nobody's apologized to you like nobody's mm -hmm. reached out to say I'm sorry and comments like this like they're just beating you with that hammer again and I hate it um because you deserve an apology and you haven't had one and nobody in the comments has ever apologized to you for the way that the church has treated you and so yeah. I feel like as part of the church like I want to say sorry and at the same time I'm like I almost want to like email everybody <laughs> who's like <laughs> hurt you and been like what the hell dude <laughs> screenshot so. them screenshot the comment find their employer send the screenshot yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am um, I really appreciate your heart and protectiveness. I, I get it. I I guess I've had so many in-person conversations that have been so much harsher than what someone could say to me online Yeah. by people that actually have a part in my life. And that's been way more painful than anything someone could do to mm -hmm. me online. And if I can, and I know this sounds like I don't know, melodramatic, but like if I can take the hits that would go towards someone else and who knows, maybe yeah. they'll just hit multiple people, but I'd rather show people that you can take these hits and mm. if you know who you are, it's not going to affect you. And yeah, it Bars. hurts a little bit, but I would rather take these hits for younger people who are still in the middle of mm -hmm. it all and show that there's someone that is in your corner. Yeah. I'm, I'm there's people that will fight for you. There's people mm -hmm. that are on your side that will say other things than that will not tell you you're condemned mm -hmm. if you're gay. Yeah. They won't tell you you can't be in church if you're gay. If you want to be in church and be gay, there are people that believe you should and that there are people that will fight for you to have that right. Yeah. yeah. And so if I get to get hit for that, that's an honor. Like I feel honored and mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm not perfect. I feel pain and I had my comments on and I was getting comments notifications on my phone every five minutes with someone saying carry your cross carry your cross and 500 variations again and I was in a bad place I was sad because of all this other stuff mm -hmm. I'm like this does really hurt but like what an honor that people are listening to me talk and I can shed a little bit of light in this really dark place with yeah. these people that are just 
beating us all over the head like I at one point told Susie I was like why don't you guys just turn off the comments and then afterward after we got off the phone I was thinking about it and I was like how embarrassing is it that these grown people these grown ass people that claim to be Christians need to be policed in the comments like you're an adult yeah it's kind of sad. I don't have a perfect answer. Even now, I'm like, I've literally been like, you might be right. I don't, I feel really sad there, that people are seeing no, these. There is no perfect right answer. answer, yeah. I think we'll always get these comments. You know, this yeah. one is worse. But Instagram, we always get hate and cruel sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it's genuine conversations. Sometimes it's just mm-hmm. mean. But I think we'd have to hide comments on every video if we were to not get any of this. Yeah. What's interesting is this happened and then the whole Mark Driscoll f- fiasco of him getting kicked out of a conference happened. And okay, what's, even, the, what's the tea? Give me the kiki. Who's Mark so Driscoll? So Mark Driscoll <laughs> is a pastor. He pastored Mars Hill Church. And basically a podcast came out a few years ago where a bunch of stuff came to light that he was abusive to his staff, a lot of other things. Long story short. Um, problematic pastor already a men's conference decides to have him out to speak and the first day night of the conference they had an acrobat come up on stage (laughs) an acrobat an acrobat the guy okay so the guy put a sword in his mouth giving mega church it is oh and they (laughs) also had a monster truck that night too your church tithe at work uh yes exactly so this acrobat they had what looked like a stripper pole from the floor (laughs) to the ceiling (laughs) it's giving miley cyrus at the vma and we know they don't like that (laughs) they're okay with the the swords and all that but the well not okay. the pole not the pole here's what happens the guy gets on stage takes his vest off he's like full so like it's magic mic six pack and, and this, this happened at a church yes he puts a sword where's this video just for it's, i don't know for research um he puts the sword in his mouth he climbs up the stripper pole and then does he sl- yeah. Okay, Slide. gay icon. Gay icon. Gaga? Okay. You I really want to finish this. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We're sorry, both sorry, interrupting. Sorry. Yeah, you I'm both, so you're sorry. Both okay, so he climbs up, he slides down, the sword stops a few inches before it. So that's a, <gasps> the big shock and all, right? Next night, Mark Driscoll gets on stage and he's speaking and he says the sentiment about the Jezebel spirit opened up our conference, that guy on the stripper pole, blah, blah, blah. The man who's actually the guy who manages a conference yells from the audience, you're done. And he kicks him off stage. Mark Driscoll walks off stage. The guy comes up on stage and says, I met with Mark 30 minutes before his message. He never told me about this disgruntled opinion that he has. And he could, she, he should have told me. He references Matthew, goes out, finds him in the parking lot. This is so messy. So messy. Long story <laughs> it's short. All public. Yeah. Long, Mark Driscoll has since gotten a lot of following and likes because of this scandal saying that we support you this shouldn't be happening at churches and then there's there are other people who are like well first of all who is this man who is managing this event that would even have mark driscoll at like all of you are messed up like (laughs) you're all wrong and so there are christians all coming at each other and so to finish my thought i was like man if all these christians are coming at each other of course we're going to get a ton of hate like there's yeah. already so much discord within the church christians don't even get along with each other exactly no yeah so many denominations yeah. you know what everybody in this whole situation mark driscoll this other pastor that i forget his name whatever they've all kind of like apologized to each other and like there's still kind of tea brewing because oh mark, my gosh can we get andy cohen on this mark driscoll <laughs> can we get a reunion please. on this please. called i'm the, here for the drama that guy who managed this event he mark driscoll called his son and told him you need to get out of that church it's like a bad place to be and so anyways there's I all this questions. tea but <laughs> I want justice for the man who was called the Jezebel spirit. Right. Yeah, that the, is so messed up. Because yeah. he was just out here doing his talent. He got hired. Yeah. Like he didn't sign What's up to that? be like Isn't persecuted. There, um, a thing in the Bible that says like gouge your own eyes out if you're the one that like. Yeah, there's a lot of eye gouging in the Bible for sure. You mean the speck in the eye? There's a plank in your eye. No, no, no. It's no, like um, something about. I'm a bad pastor's kid right now. Do you know it? If your eye causes you to sin, gouge yeah. it out. And if your hand right. causes you to stumble, yeah. cut it off. Because well, like, like, that guy's probably up there just like, just doing his he's job. doing his thing. He doesn't see the sword as something 
Well, it's not the sword. It was the... He doesn't see the sword or the pole or the taking <laughs> off of the vest as... Honestly, can I say something... Something sexual. <laughs> can I say something controversial? Go for it. Driscoll's giving closeted gay. Well, this has been an incredible talk. I feel like we've kind of covered everything. <laughs> Have we talked about everything? I feel like we talked about nothing. I and know. Everything. And, and everything. everything. All at once. <laughs> but I do love that there's two of you. Mm, I love it too. And, and soon a third. <gasps> the baby. The next generation. It's a yeah, girl. Next gen. Next gen. Exciting. Wow. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week yeah. and listening to this talk. Mm-hmm. If you feel so called, uh, leave us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you can get a notification every time we post. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. You're going to love it. <laughs> Thanks right. for listening to that. I, I tried, tried to, to be, be straight, straight podcast. podcast. Peace.